Hi, it's Bernie Slavin. Thanks for joining me on uh, Facebook and YouTube Live. And thanks as always to the sponsors, um, GRS Insulation, TGM Cars, Advanced Utility Solutions, Dovecot, Ocean Lighting, Cornerstone, Ultimate Windows, Lines, and Cleveland Systems Insulation. Um, last night, what did I see last night? I actually went to the game. One of my mates, Carl, got in touch last week. Do you fancy the hill? I said, well, I usually watch them on the TV. If you want me to go, go with you. So we travelled down, we got down there early doors, we were in one of the lounges. Um, I watch every game on the telly, away game, home games, I'm, I'm always at the Riverside, I host the Legends Lounge, but I went there and I'm thinking, is there much to play for, will it be a good game, good atmosphere? But you know what, I thought it was a good game of football. Both teams went for it, both of them tried to win the game. Um, obviously we got off to a golden start, four, was it four minutes in, ball over the top, uh, Goes into Lati Laugh, he's near post. I was reflecting, think I should have stopped at near post. But Lati Laugh scored another goal. He's 11th league goal of the season. I think it's 13 in total, so well done to him. Um, but then for the next half hour, they totally controlled controlled the, the game. They, uh, they got the ball wide in good positions, left and right. They were getting quality balls in the box. They missed chances. Deng was, despite one uh, mess up, we'll come to that in a minute, but he had a couple of great saves on the night. But, um, and then into the second half, we, a bit better, periodically, it wasn't throughout the second half, we, we didn't overturn them, but at least we get the goal back, and it was a fine goal, their lad got it, the, the edge of the 18 yard box, and he took, a took one touch too many, and he, he hesitated, he should have hit it, but he never, caught in possession, and we made about six, seven passes, from our 18 yard box to their 18 yard box, and Azaz got the goal, for me it was a great goal, um, great move, Bit of pace, especially at the end when your energy levels are dropping, we came alive and grabbed it, an equaliser. Um, for me, that indicates that neither team's going anywhere this season. Both of them have been the championship next season. The the playoff positions is a pipe dream. Uh, as I keep saying, I've never thought otherwise. But I think last night just rubber stamped what, what my thoughts are. And probably you as fans know now that more or less, you know, we need to win four games, another team need to lose four, more or less. Uh, but anyway, it was a, it was there was good atmosphere. The Borough fans away in the far corner where I was sitting, they were right in that corner. Uh, made a lot of noise as always, and great support. Uh, and and the Hull fans made a great noise as well. So well done to everybody that made the journey as always. You know, expenditure time um, and patience. You travel in the country and there's traffic. I mean, the team bus by all accounts was late. There was something going on in the road and, the, and, and they were late coming in. Uh, just getting off the Borough theme at the minute, I heard a couple of hours ago, uh, just say a prayer um, and thoughts with Harry Kane's family, by all accounts, was in a, a car accident. Um, young family. So, hope and pray that they're okay. Uh, and then tonight, I've just watched the... The reason I put it to 10, I know people go working, some I, I get that, but... I think if you're watching a game, you want to watch every, every bite, you don't want to just switch off. And tonight's game, Liverpool, uh, Atalanta, the um, Italian team, by God, they're six in their division, six. Liverpool are flying, chance of winning the Premier League. They've been brilliant this season. And Atlanta beat them 3 0 at Anfield. Unbelievable, you couldn't make it up. Couldn't make it up. So. And I tell you who I seen there. Uh, what was his name again? Darun played for Middlesbrough. He was playing for Atlanta. Do you remember Darun? If you're a Borough fan, do you remember him? I don't think he made it that big an impression. But he came from Atlanta to Middlesbrough. I think he's played over two hundred and fifty games for them. He can't be Borough and then he went back to Atlanta. But he was playing tonight as well. Um, but Liverpool were poor. Dear me, poor three 0 Anfield. That's that's a shock return for a team that's flying high. As I say, they're six in Serie A. So, uh, so that was that, and then um, I'm just looking here. Yeah, last night I met Nick Bambi, Nick Bambi, former Borough star. Uh, I think he was here for about 16, 17 months. Uh, him and Hig, Nick, Craig Hig, Higgy got the nickname the Midget Gems. Two of them are very good together. Worked as a pair, worked in tandem. They were quick, tricky, creative, scored. Smashing pair, and then that, that rhythm was upset, and, and, and duo was upset, uh, meaning split when, when Janino was signed, and, and then Bambi moved on. But 
Bambi, great career. Spurs, Borough, Everton, Liverpool, Leeds, Hull City. Great career. And he was on the podium last night. I do in the lounge. He was getting interviewed by a lad and, and I seen him at over him because I knew Bambi. I've interviewed him in the past for Borough TV. And he's a great guy, uh, Nick Bambi. He was telling me he, he was... Um, I think he was up this night. There was recently, it was uh, Jamie Potts. I think it was his 50th and both of them 50th birthday around about the same time. So he's obviously in tour with Jamie and... Uh, but he's a lovely guy. He was a good talker. Uh, and he was a very good player. I think he's something like 27 caps for England. So a great career. Um, I was hoping to meet Andy Payton. Remember Andy Payton? He played in the... Uh, he played in that season. We got promotion. When we, he's in the picture when you see us all in the Wills dressing room. We got promotion into the inaugural uh, Premier League. Andy was in there. I liked Andy. Last time I met Andy was 2015. I went to a Morrissey concert at Hull and I got off the train with my missus. Walked over... The traffic lights and the horn pumped and I looked and it was Andy Payton. And uh, him and his son they ended up with the coffee together in the coffee shop. I got in touch with him yesterday thinking he, he got to the game, but unfortunately he was busy, so he, uh, he never made it. Yeah, so there we go. If you've seen the game last night, have you written the season off now? Is that it? Would you give guys like Sonny Finch a go now with four remaining games? You know, we've got... Um, Ipswich Town away Saturday who drew 0-0 was it 0-0 last night uh, would you give Sonny Finch a go along with a couple of other younger lads see what they've got do you keep playing the lone players who odds on at least three if not the four return to the parent club would you sign any of them I'm asking you the fan you're the guys that matter I've got my own opinions but I'm asking you would you keep any of the loanees there's four would you keep any of them and if, if you if you do who, what ones would you keep Uh and what are you expecting in the summer? Are you expecting a lot of cash spent? Are you expecting more unknowns in that we're going to polish and try and sell like a Rogers after six months to get rid of them and make a boatload of money? I'm intrigued to see what you're going to say. Uh, Enzo says we should have beaten Hull. Enzo, we should have, we could have. We ha The first 15 minutes, after get the dream... The dream start, four minutes in, like the last scores, he's 11th league goal of the season, 13 in total... Um, their fans instantly were saying, what's going on here? We're not even on the park and they've scored. But then they just took control and the number 23, can't remember his name, probably couldn't pronounce it. He was he tore uh, Jones and Ailing, Jones and Ailing uh, got a roasting in the first half. The ball's getting played over the top, Ailing's against this whippersnapper who was highly skillful and technical and Delivered good balls in the box and had a couple of shots. And Jones wasn't really helping nailing. And going forward, Ailing and Jones both struggled to go forward. So neither did it. The first half, neither did the defensive duties and neither did the forward uh, duties. Second half, we showed it up and started to put in a shift and stop the, the 23, the left winger. But we took our time in doing it. A uh, couple of strikers and another attacking midfielder, Ailing for a year. That's for Paul David. So if we're going to go for Ailing... Hey, he's a hundred and ten percent. He's not a shirker. He's he is what he is. Every time he makes a title, I say that will say made leads on it. He gets through the ball, the player, everything. He's 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 a tough lad. But is that for the future? I thought we're building for the future. And that's why we brought twelve kids in in the summer. We said that more or less the loans weren't going to happen, but we've did it, and we've got four in. And we're going to sign them. You're, you're saying Ailing. Me personally, I'd rather see a, a Dick Steele come in. I can ask Dick Steele has been able to, yeah, but he's never really been given the chance under Car uh, Carrick. What does Dick Steele have that Ailing isn't? Age, he's younger, he's quicker, he's as strong as him, maybe not as aggressive, up and down, he's got stamina, box to box. I'm sure he, the more you stroke his ego, he'll be able to deliver better balls than Ailing. So for me, uh, I know what I would do, but I'm not in charge of the club, I'm going to give my, my opinion and thoughts, what I've seen. Uh, so, my sister lived in Hull. Enzo says his sister lived in Hull. Was she there last night, Enzo? Was she there cheering on Hull City? We will beat Ipswich. Ipswich like Leeds and everybody else. They're all stumbling now. But I look at their stumbling and I think, why are they stumbling? Because of pressure. The pressure's starting to get them. We need some experience, Bernie. No, Paul, I agree with that as well. I agree with that. Aliens get... Uh, experience, maturity, totally get it, Housen's got it, I get it. But bring in a couple of lads who's maybe 28, 
rather than 30, 31, 32. A couple of lads that's 28, 29 at the peak and, and, and got a wee bit more on the legs. Nothing wrong with that, is it? I've got a scout network that goes Europe, the world. Why are we, why are we going for lone players that's over the age of 30? I, I, I would rather see younger lads. But I, now, I really think that that is it now. Uh, regarding playoffs, I know it's still a pipe dream, and as long as it's mathematically not proven, we're selling me a chance. It's not going to happen, and you can take me there. It's not going to happen. If it happened, it would be, uh, it'd be a minor miracle, but it ain't going to happen. So I might you just well accept it and get some of your eye, bleed the young lads in. If I was, if I was on contract at Middlesbrough, and I see the three loan players, four loan players getting a game before me, I'd be peeved off, and I'd really question. Where's my career going here? The other question, dying, a lot of talk over the, uh, well, was it Saturday I did the, the last Facebook Live? A um, lot of talk about Deng. Is Deng staying? Is he going? The, he's attracting attention for Premier League clubs, supposedly. Uh, if the papers, I don't believe the papers, as I said, I don't believe they date in the newspapers. They don't read newspapers now. Uh, but no smoke without fire, the old cliche and saying, is he on his way? Does he want out? Would you sell him? As I say, I've seen better caters than Deng. I've seen Randolph. Randolph, for me, was a better cater than Deng. Matt Swartz, I certainly was, in 10 years at Borough, magnificent. Stephen Pears, I played with, 10 years, magnificent. Uh, before that, Jim Platt, I looked at his record, amazing. 500-odd games for his for his club. So there's been some great goalkeepers, but there's some duffers as well. Don't get me wrong, Deng's not a duffer. The second goal was a duffer. When he played it last night, I actually felt like standing up and applauding, saying, we deserve it, we deserve it. Fanning about, messing about the back, think we're Man City, we're a million miles from Man City. Where is the benefits? The end is on a six-yard box, he's got the ball, central, if you've not seen it. He plays the ball there, 18 yards to O'Brien, no, not even 18 yards, so if he's at the six-yard box, he's played it but 10 yards here, 10 yards He's on the edge of the box, central, guy right up his backside, and he sort of slips, hesitates, the guy robs it and puts it in the top right-hand corner. Where is the benefits of that? We get what we get what we're trying to do, but we're not very good at it. We've got away with it all season. The majority of times we've got away with it. Either poor misses or a mistake. I mean, last night, the, the 26 I was talking about, the left winger, there was one last night, he went through, the flag didn't go up initially, is it the doing or the let it roll? Deng's away off his line, he's dinked it, goal, disallowed, offside, fine. But again, messing about wrong areas, keep our way off his line. I'm surprised he's not been dinked more than once or twice this season. Uh, anyway, so I'll keep reading these out more, we'll crack it. Uh, Les Lacroix says, well, I like to watch an in-depth, but you do your show when it starts on a Saturday. Well, I like to watch an in-depth, but you do your show. And it starts on Saturday. Hold on a minute, Leslie. You're a Borough fan. You're a Borough lad. What do you mean, Ant and Dick? What a load of old junk. Is that what you watch on a Saturday night? Away. Get away. Ant and Dick, two Jordy lads. Forget that. And there's a thing called you can watch it anytime you want now. You don't you want, It's not like the old days. Come on, Leslie. You've not still got the black and white telly with four, four or five channels, Leslie. Come on. You can see any, any game, any, any programme in the world at any time you want. Ah, oh, Jamie Park, you seen big lad. Well, yeah, but Jamie's a good lad, like Jamie. Point out from back again, gifted him a goal, pathetic. It was, Leslie. As I say, when I'm sitting, we're one nil up, then we go one each, and they deserve to get back in the game. Then they absolutely trounced for half an hour, and then they got the goal, and it came for stupidity and gambling and messing about in the wrong areas. I just keep, I always go back to Jack Charlton. I played under Jack for the Republic for three years. I knew Jack exactly what he was about. Long ball man. No messing about the bite he'd ring your neck. He'd take you off. He would punch you, whatever. Um, I'm always talking about punching, but he would certainly tell you no. Uh, but these days, this... Oh, it's in the DNA we play for the back. But we're not good at it. And the best laugh is we get... So we go... Say we go for um, Ailing to Van der Berg, to Clark, to Engel, and then we go into, say, Greenwood, and then it comes back to Engel, and then it goes into Clark, and then it goes into O'Brien, comes back to Clark, and then it goes way to Jones, plays it back to Clark, he passes it back to Deng, and then the Eng launches it. What's all that about? Slow, laboured, predictable. Where did the goal come from last night, Lighty Laugh? 
One ball over the top, he's in. I think it was uh, I think it was Engel that, that put him through. But one ball over the top, Engel put him through for his slightly laugh. I love football, but sometimes you need to you need to change the methods. Messing about. I mean, I watched Liverpool. They, they're messing about as well at the back. That other team, dear God. Mind you, we were at the Chelsea game. We were messing about the back and let six in. Could have been 16. When a bird going to learn, so we're all seeing the same game here, Lee Stockton. The same goalkeeper mistakes again over the season it costs us big time. It has, uh, Lee. And as I say, if 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 that's Carrick's message, and I think Carrick's written record over the over the season that he he wants to see that style and brand. Um but if I'm a player, Carrick's in the dugout of pitch side. The focus is on me, on the cameras around the planet. And, the, and I went, if I reflect back to Chelsea, which was the biggest drubbing ever, six, we messing about in the wrong areas. As soon as we go over the line, if it happens a couple of times, we see somebody out there, a house, we're talking about experience, a house in the railing goes, do you know what? We'll talk to you, Carrick, at, at half time, I feel. We're changing it. We're no messing about the back. Launch it. O'Brien, if O'Brien... Looks at Dan and goes, no, I don't want it. I'm moving out of this position and push yourself up the park. And then and Clarty goes, hey, don't want it. And tell Dan, we don't care what's been said, it ain't working. We went through one nil comfortable, good start, great start in four minutes. And then half an hour, we, we lose the plot, lose momentum, lose two goals. And the second goal was absolute stupidity. Colin Fry says both of Hull's goals were a joke. Yeah, yeah. There were two. But saying that, the amount of balls they get into the box, I tell you, I read, I don't no, social media. I flicked through social media in the morning when I wake up. And it, and everybody, well, majority, were hammering Greenwood. The Greenwood wasn't good. John said a mayor. I think he was involved in a lot. But he's a mayor. He shouldn't have been on the pitch to me to be creative in the goal. One of the goals, the second goal was scored. He never got a ball in the box. He never tracked back. He never helped Ailing. He never beat a man. Never crossed any ball of any real quality and substance. But everybody's just Kane and Greenwood. They get this, they get one guy in their head and they just, it happened my day. It used to be some of the lads I played with. No matter what they did, the boot boys were on their case. And, and it's still it's still relevant today. Obviously the team's changed, the players have changed, the names have changed. But... They just start caning one player. No, there was, hey, come on. Greenwood didn't have a great game, but I didn't see a lot of the game. I still think Dane was the best, the best, uh, without him would have got beat. So Dane, despite his horror and playing it there, but I blame, I blame the wee man as well, O'Brien, don't come in there. I know you're told to, but don't come in there. We're not, we're not taking chances tonight. We're going to push forward. We've got to go with the long ball. Let's keep doing that. And we had to, and, and, and the other thing, I look at Latty Laugh now, right? I don't hear anybody saying, oh, Foz is the best striker at the club. Latty Laugh took over now. He's banging him in. Well done to him. I sympathised with him last night. He's up there, two heavy ass centre backs, a right back, a left back. They're playing with four. And he's up there in between them all. And they're all on the line. I then look at the Hill side when they're going in the attack. And we're defending. We've got four. And they've got four. Right up level ways. That that was that was the the shot. I was trying to get a bit of my camera and put it on social media. That was that's what I seen. Lighty laugh, five foot nothing, surrounded with four. We we the, the other guys like like Housen and O'Brien and Greenwood all deep, no going up and joining them, getting in the line and, and making it four against four. They did, and for me they were more ambitious. They passed the ball slicker. Hey, look, eight games without defeat, brilliant. But another thing I want to ask about the fans. Oh, when we had the bad period and we're up and down in turbulence and, 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 and off days, now we've went eight games unbeaten. What's happened to the injury? Oh, when we were getting beat and we had the bad time down to injuries. Now we've got injuries to the best players. Hackney, been injured for a month or two, six, seven weeks, whatever. Injured or in and out, injured. McGree, injured. Foz, injured. Uh, Dale Fry's still injured, Big Coburn's still injured. What's happened? I'll tell you what it is, pressure, no pressure. There's no pressure now. You know, Carrick says, yeah, as long as it's mathematically, we'll go for it. Yeah, it has to be professional as ever. But the lads within, I think some are thinking, 
well, I won't be here next year anyway, or I'll be out the door, or no pressure. Nobody's expecting this playoffs now, we're just going to enjoy it. And I think that's why we went eight games unbeaten. I think it's five victories, three draws. But that's no mean feat. That's a good run. Can we keep going into the season? I don't think so, personally. I think if we, we need to step it up, otherwise I think if Leeds turn it on, Ipswich will get, will get done big time. That's what I believe. Games will be getting away with games, certain games, um, own goals, uh, beating 10 men, man sent off. There's loads of wee things went away. And you need a bit of luck in life and in football. And we've got there. But as a spectacle, we've not sustained a, a decent game. And all the, all the undefeated run, I can't remember one game that sticks out and we go, wow. Southampton, they should have been four up in the first half. The big Scottish international missed the hatful. You know, last night, as I say, they had half an hour where they could have blown us away to smithereens. So, what's going to happen this summer? Who are we keeping? Many players do you think will go. Is it going to be an exodus? I'm intrigued to see what you're going to say. Um, Lumley cost us the season. We failed, which you mentioned, he would, he, he would cost us. Well, it's not just him, the, the, the whole messing about uh, approach of the team is ridiculous when you're not very good at it. It's gambling. I don't gamble. There's no way in this planet I would gamble. And I was a defender on that team, I'd go, ah, I'd be shaking my head and let the fans know I don't want it. I don't want it. No. Uh, to let him know and the fans know nothing to do with me. I don't care what we've been told. We ain't doing it. We're not good at it. I mean, it eventually messes about, goes to Clark, and then Clark launches it. Uh, Lumley cost this season, we failed, as you mentioned, because this season playing out from the back has cost us 10 points. Possibly, I've never really counted the points, but there's definitely certain games. No chances, you miss chances, it costs games. You let crap goals in, it costs games. My cat Whiskey supports Sunland as he's a black cat. Oh, it ain't got Enzo. The black cat, hey, I love cats, look after it. Look after it, I love all animals. Uh, Eddie Jeff Edwards, Eddie Jeff boy, how are you? I salute you, Eddie. Uh, hi, Bernie. Jeff the Copper, that's what I know him as, that's his name. I said we still, we're still not good enough, but we need to build and come out of the starting blocks uh, at the beginning uh, of the season, running into Carrick. We trust, I hope it works for him. Yeah, well, Carrick needs support. He needs better quality of players. He needs better loan players. You know, personally, would I keep, the, would I keep any of the loan players? Ailing, I just think, I looked up last night, Great energy, as I say, great, great work rate, great appetite, despite he's 32, whatever he is. But he's got both knees covered up with strappings, and I've seen him getting a, some water, and I don't know if it was a couple of tablets, whatever. Might have been Volt or all, but I don't know. There was something to do it anyway, and he got a thing with water just before the game kicked off. And when it, I've never been that close, I was actually low down, and I could see the way he's running his knees, I don't know, they look like. Hen, hen, maybe his hen toad, but his knees were nearly rubbing together, and I just sort of. And the guy he was playing against obviously was leaning for dead because of pace. Pace is a big threat to defenders. They don't like trickery, but they certainly don't like pace. Um, but he needed a, a hand last night. But so no, I wouldn't. I, I probably wouldn't. Um, I wouldn't sign him. I know some people are saying maybe I set my standards higher. Ailing's been a great professional, great player. I still think he's got an appetite for the game. I still think he's good enough to play championship level. But I want more than that as a Borough fan. I want more than that. Um, Thomas, not really, it's came, is it Lester Thomas came in? He's not really, really settled. You know, people write him off, oh, he's terrible, he's, he came off the bench last night, never made any impression, but Thomas, I've not seen anything in Thomas, if I'm, if I'm brutally honest. Um, O'Brien, O'Brien's busy. As I say, I'd like to see him scoring a couple of goals and take more responsibility. Uh and creating more. I think sometimes he flatters to the sea, busy, 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 but no product. Uh, and I like to see product. If you're a winger, you need to cross the ball, and if you're a forward, you need to score, and a goal kit and defenders, you need to keep clean sheets. So there's still a few question marks with lads with Brian Greenwood. Greenwood, as I say, the Boo Boys were on his case last night, or certainly on social media they were. Um, I don't think we're saying him either. So me personally, and I'm not being cruel, I'm just being honest, I wouldn't sign any of them. There must be better loan players if we're going to sign loans than those four. And, and better ages. And, and a couple, we still need guys. But I say, rather than over 30, we need a couple of 28-year-olds, 29 with experience. A wee bit quicker, a wee bit more in the legs. Uh, 
You heard anything about Rangers interested in Glover, Bernie? Timmy Leach? No, Timmy. I've not heard anything, no, no. I was a big Jeff the referee. He's a Rangers fan. He's, he's at the ground with Rangers. That's his team. Never mentioned anything, but I've never heard anything about that. I mean, Glover, obviously, if you don't know, Glover's the keeper. Um, hey, Glover's did half decent. But uh, I've never heard anything about, about that, Timmy. Uh, Sean Mong says, Saul Brent is a man. Next season, time he took the number one shot. Well, Dean, Dean Wilson, how thanks, Dean. Look, Saul Brent, I don't know him personally. I did text him, I think it was last year. I was at this season. Congratulate me, won some award. And uh, as I say, I don't know him personally, but I know that wherever he's went, whether it's north or south of the border, I know it's lower division teams. He's got man of the match, he's got player of the month, he's got player of the years. And I've kept questioning. He's been out alone for two or three years. Why are we not giving them an opportunity? Why are we not giving them a chance? And, and I still don't know why we're not giving them a chance. But now I, I believe we've brought them back, I'm bringing them back, so hopefully he gets a chance next year. He's got one year of his contract left. He's been here as a kid came through the ranks. He's a local lad. He'll wear the shirt with pride. Let's see what he's got. But for whatever reason, um, <coughs> excuse me, he's not being given that opportunity, which I think is a shame. I'd rather see a local lad playing in somebody for America or whatever. Oh, I see a local lad. I'd love to. Oh, I might see this Sonny Finch. People keep nipping in my ear, but then they seen Sonny Finch. No. See his goal record, yeah, he scores gold, but uh, so did Kavner. He went in a puff of smoke. Uh, Truman, 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 Truman. I just laugh here, it says Brian Clough is watching. Brian Clough is watching. Uh, Andrew Hill says, Jones had a poor game last night for Borough, do you agree? I've, I mentioned that, Andrew, maybe you've just joined us. Look, Jones is one of the games, in my opinion, again. Everything's my opinion. Whether I might be wrong, I might be right, but it's my opinion. So I'll stick to my opinion. Jones is one of those players, he could be terrific, 10-minute spell, the next 10 minutes he's like a pub player. And he's hitty missy, he's frustrating, he doesn't get the balls in where he should. He take a touch, get it in, he takes a touch, another touch, and then the, the opportunity has closed down across the ball, and then he'll, he'll play it back and keeps retention of the ball. When when Jonesy first came in the team, breath of fresh air. He was direct, free, fearless, and delivered good balls and scored the right few goals. He's been hitty missy, and last night he was poor. If I was there, I'd be strangling, saying, you never helped me out. I was getting done. You've got pace, more pace than me. I'm 32 year old. You're 20-odd. Come back and help me. But it never happened in the first half. A bit better second half, but Jones, I know he, I think he played a part in the first goal. He passed the ball square. But he shouldn't have been on the part. You're having a go at um, Greenwood. Jones was arguably, well, the worst player for me in the Borough shot last night. And yet some games he has like We missed him when he was out injured. I'm not saying that, but he's too hit missy for me. He's a player that I think could go in the summer. He's got one year left. Do I think we'll offer him a contract? No. If we don't, what happens? Well, we'll get to January and we'll have to get rid of him. Or, if we don't offer him a contract, we'll have to get rid of him in January. That upsets the apple cart. Or he runs his contract down what's away a free agent. Like a son belonger and many others. I'm sure we'll be looking for cash. Big Paddy McNair. Still injured, is he? He'll be gone. Meant to be the top earner at the club. Uh, the rumours have you belief. Um, McGree, I still think somebody says to me, oh, McGree's going to sign. I don't think he will. Why? I think he's too good for this team. I think McGree's too good for this team. Has he showed it this season? No. Showed it last season. We all the good players running about and how good we were and how good the football was. It's night and day. What he would played in last year with gels bombing up the left, delivered quality balls and Archie getting in there and Ramsey getting in there and Akpom scoring goals for fun. It was a great team to be in. That was, as I say, that was the best team I've seen in 30 odd year. It was pure football. It was refreshing. It was fearless. This season, turbulent, up and down. Yeah, all right. Yeah, that was good. We've still got the same plans and idea, but we've not got the quality. And when I see Latty Laugh and I look at the strike force, Latty Laugh up front of his own with four big, two big centre backs and full backs, and, and all the midfielders too deep. And he's up there on his own with no real service left or right. That's criminal. That's criminal for Latty Laugh. And, and, and I look at the bench and we've got uh, Sonny Finch. That's it. That's what straight for us. Why? Because we get rid of Rogers. We get rid of young Kavner. We let Big Crooksy go. That's why we've got in this position. Maybe if we kept on the players, we might have made the top six. 
But once you get rid of those guys, there's a statement of intent, the wrong intent, that we're going nowhere. And we don't really, we're no bothered this year if we get it. That's, that's, what, what we're bringing in and letting go, that, that, that for me is an indication we're happy where we are. That, that's, that's a telltale sign for me. Not until it's mathematically impossible to say, Muhammad, hi Muhammad, that's a good result. No, a wee point's good. But both teams were on the same, still on the same points, get into the last night's game, both went to try and win it, and neither won it. For me, the other teams can only blow it. I still think that Norwich could get done and miss out in top six with four games left. I think Coventry could be the dark horses. They've got a game in hand, and if they won that game in hand, if they won it, of course, they go two points behind Norwich, and I think the pressure's on Norwich. Uh, so, close the gap, but it might not be the last one. I missed a chance to close the gap. How long have we been saying this? So, we're six behind Norwich, who are six, yeah? And they're better goal difference, so make that seven. So, we're seven points behind with 12 up for grabs. No, I'm not a mathematical genius. But are we going to go and win the next four when we're playing Leeds who want to finish top of the league? Ipswich who want to finish top of the league? We could do. They've had bad results in the last couple of days. But we need to be better than what we've been. Because they're going to hit it again. As I say, we're still playing without fear. So that's their advantage. Maybe maybe we will get them one all four, but do I believe that? No. Uh, Thomas to join Middlesbrough next so for Thomas to join Middlesbrough next season is doing the rounds from Huddersfield. Tittle tattle, Mohammed, tittle tattle. Yeah. Uh, any ferry talks from Nick Bambi, who you meet? Uh, he's no plans to go into management again, Ben and Joe Slavin. Yeah, I listened to him intently before I went and had a chat with him. And he was on the podium, we just say he was asked the question, what are you up to now? He says, Well, Obviously, I played here at Hull when he was finishing his career and then he got handed the manager's job. He did a bit of coaching. He said, I'm finished. I'm done with that. I'm done with all that. He said, and the guy says, what? The guy was interviewing him. So the host says, uh, so what are you up to now? now? He says, I just travel the world. Now, Bernie, is John Latila doing okay? We didn't give, give in as easy. Now, Bernie, uh, John Latila doing okay? We didn't give an easy... For John, John who? John Sweno. Look, Lighty Laugh, as I say. And by the way, now there was one there was one or two touches last night I went astray. Paul shot the first touch, but the, the lad needs somebody different alongside him, a big, even a big ugly centre forward who's gonna put it about elbows. I was gonna say bash a few noses. I don't mean that, I mean you know, put yourself about ruffle feathers. That's a better way to put it. Ruffle feathers, and 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 link up. I would love to see. And, and Michael Carrick's never done it. I don't know why. Lighty laugh goes number ten. Lighty laugh's loaded with pace. You get a big lad up front. Now Coburn was probably the prime example. The only guy that's different for everybody in the squad. But he was big, gangly, awkward, and would put a shift in, running, closing, harassing, and he'd get kicks and we get up. Get the ball into Coburn, Lattie Laugh get the pace, link up, join in, work as a pair, and then when opposition get it again, Lattie Laugh's with back in the 10 because he's got the pace and he's got the stamina, back in, and the big man stays up there. But that was never given an opportunity. But next season, I'd like to see somebody come in of that ilk, because be, I'll be honest, I, I think Coburn will go in the flash if anybody comes in from. Uh, what is all this passing out the back all about? Teams can read it as like a book. Yeah, it's with Paul. Uh, for Paul Carson, Kaysen, John Sweeney says, sorry passing about the back, it does not work. But if you've watched me on here all season, last season, I kept saying it. We're no good at it. Man City is the best in the world. They can do it. The top teams can do it because they've got the top players. You can play any shape and any formation when you've got the best players. Unfortunately, we have not got the best players. We've got basement buys. That doesn't mean they're bad players. But that's an indication that if there were... Great, they'd be going to bigger clubs, better clubs with more money and whatever. But no good is it. We hesitate. There's no real leaders. There's no the thing that really annoys me. The ball goes up the wing. Say, say it's Jones, I'm picking Jones, but say it was Jones, Duff ball hits the first man. Like a laugh, I'll look over her, huh? just accepting. I've I've seen it before, jog back. Up the wing again, like a laugh, busting his backside to get into the box. 
everybody focusing the ball. First man again. Lighty laugh, bite in position. After the second one, Lighty laugh needs to go over and get a grip with him and say, listen you, make sure you get the ball in. I'm running, busting my gut to get in that ball so you're on the end of your cross and you keep it the first man. I don't see any of that. There's an acceptance, oh, we'll jog back. And then you're back in again, oh, we'll back in again. In my day, I was shooting a hen day. And he would give me it back. It's healthy. It's healthy. That's the only way. If your teammates can't get their act together, the cell, you need to urge them to get it together. You need to give them a rocket. You need to tell them verbally. Go and let them know. Or when the ball's at a playground, say, hey, listen, you get the ball. And you, I'm going to keep busting my gut for you. You're duffing every ball up. And if I'm missing a few chances, someone might say, how about putting one in? I was going to say get his bonus money. He don't need bonus money these days. He did Maddie. Uh, do you think we should have gone for five across the back line? Well, I don't know why we just lost that identity all of a sudden. Is it the amount of injuries carries went? No. Because the, the three centre backs was walking the treat. Uh, Burnley, what do you think the two goals conceded last night? Poor, David, poor. They are poor. Lack of communication, messing about in the wrong areas, taking chances, gambling. Uh, it's lazy football. Nobody wants to make the run. They can't play out from the back. Uh, not good enough. But Stephen, uh, Stephen Holland, thank you. I've been saying this whole season and last season. We're not good at it. Chelsea, I keep reflecting on Chelsea. They're the big boys. We got a great result here. Great atmosphere. Best atmosphere of the season for me. Big cup game, Chelsea, Premier League team. We do them. Uh, we go down there 1 0 up. We go with this intention, we're going to go for it from the off. From the off, we start attacking them. Then we start messing about the back. Funny about the back, uh, a goal. That's one each. Funny about the back, two. And then I'm thinking, right, okay, we're still in the, the tie because it's a two like affair. We're two one down. What about just killing it? And just say, mate, doing that. Launch it, push out, kick, bat, or whatever, scrap. No, no, no. We keep messing about. And then we get a half time. Is it three or four? I lost count. You need an abacus. And then we six down. We keep playing. Einstein, I said it many weeks ago, months ago after, the, after that game. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. We're not good at it. We're slow, we're laboured, we're predictable, and then eventually we launch it. Are we killing time? Uh, don't forget, it's hard to hit a man who's five foot nothing against two six four giants. The only way you can hit it is over the top of the centre back for Lighty Laugh to give him his pace. That's what Lighty Laugh's want. You can't do it every game because the keepers come out their goal. But that's the idea and the plan. But to be fair to the defenders, there's not really a focal point. Oh, we'll hit Peter Crouch because Peter Crouch was six foot nine or whatever he was. They've not got that. They're looking at Lighty Laugh with these two big giants alongside them. It's a, it's a difficult ball to hit. And, and every, I'll tell you what, uh, Deng, despite me saying he's man of the match because he had two great saves, two important saves, he was shanked a few balls out as well. She's saying a load of balloons going up there. What's that all about? Balloons. I know a few balloons. Yes, yeah, so any fairy talks uh, from Nick Bambi. Yeah, Nick Bambi's a say, um, he's no he's no interested in football now. He travels the world. He, um, he's been in America for a couple of years and travelled about and his son's plays football and there's a few bits of private conversation. So, yeah. But Nick Bambi, great kid. I enjoyed watching him during his time at Borough. Him and Craig Hignett and both of them did very, very well. Um... Pete McMillan says, Pete the Brick, hiya Pete, hi Bernie, it's all down to the poor start to the season and the inconsistency, why Borough haven't made it, um, let's see, haven't made the playoffs, unfortunately the squad wasn't good enough, apart from Ailing, uh, the lone players didn't do it for me, Lattie Laugh is the one who could really shine next season, Pete the Brick, yeah, well I'm starting to believe that as well, but now I'm starting to sympathise with Lattie Laugh, I still think his touch has to be polished up and be better, there was one last night, I don't know if it was Johnny Housen, first time, hit it, keep a, keep a spilled it, and it came right back to Lattie Laugh and his touch, if he adjusts quicker, side foot, it's easy sitting in the stance in it, I don't know how quick the ball was in the ricochet, but uh, his first touch has to improve, but if he gets the service, and we give him the balls that he requires, i.e. balls over the top or down the inside left or inside right channel, he's going to get goals because he's pace. Because a lot of these centre-backs of it, you think they're running in treacle or running at Red Card Beach. You know, I watched the Swansea centre-halves. There's a big guy, Wood, that played that night. I couldn't have... Wood, I'm a fan of Woods when he was at Borough. Wasn't given the opportunity, we moved him on. Uh, but he looked muscle-bound. 
he used to be, I'm not saying he was, he was, he was really thin, he's obviously worked his upper body, but he looks muscle bound, could hardly move, he's like a weight lifter, but he looks slow, with the other centre half, so let me laugh, he's nippy, sharp, fast, and big, slow laboured centre backs, some of them are donkeys, are not good enough to keep up with him, it won't be if, if Lattie laughs at the right service, but he needs, he needs somebody in there to help him. He cannot take the responsibility all his own. He's looking to the right, average balls, left, average balls, behind him, average balls. One ball he got last night and he scored. My personal opinion, I wouldn't keep none of the lone players, Colin Fryer. Well, Colin, I've already says that. I've, I've given my reason for it. Uh, either lack of pace, uh, the age, or simply not good enough or flatter to deceive. I've got my reasons. I've thought about it. It's not something I just come on and go, oh, I'll say that. Yeah, I've seen enough to... But don't get me wrong. Again, uh, Belazer. Somebody says to me, was it last night in the game? Belazer, crap, get rid of him. He costs 800 grand. Some games I've seen him pinging 50, 60 yard crossfield balls and I think, wow, great left foot. Other times it hits a pigeon or it's a misplaced pass or a routine pass goes astray. The lad's bedding in. I would stop. Obviously, he's signed longer term. Let's see what he's got next season. And then you get to January if you think, well, he's not setting the header alight. He's still not doing the business. Then we have to offload or change or whatever. But I just think you'll get one or two this season who's not been doing it. And then next season, they start to blossom. But it depends the players running about you. If Lighty Laugh's running about up front and he's not getting any service, then he's going to burn his cell out. And uh, he'll be on a downer. A contract says loan, yeah, and it was his. Uh, going back to the last show, you were going to tell us about the jails in Scotland. Big Gates, not Eric Gates. Yeah, Berlini. Leslie, you end up in Berlini a strange ways. Because Leslie referred to one of my mates who lives in a. He says a big house with Gates. I says, you'll end up in a big house with Gates, but it'll be the jails. And it'll be strange ways, which is Manchester. A Berlini prison. You'll end up in Berlini. Or Durham. Who was, who was the guy in the, the film at Durham? Who was it? McVicker. McVicker. That's you. Leslie McVicker, I'm going to start calling you. Andrew says, I love whiskey a lot. My old cat, Oscar, got put to sleep as he had diabetes and was dying. Sorry to hear that, Enzo. He's not saying he loves whiskey. Whiskey is the name of the cat. Uh, and his old cat, Oscar. Uh, Oscar? I like Oscar. I'm an Oscar Wilde fan. I've got a photo somewhere about here. Oscar Wilde. Um, Dave says, given the injuries to some of the, the better players in the squad, do you think the recent run suggests Carrick has has us punching above a weight? Not necessarily the performances, but the results. Um, well, Dave, do you know what? I, I said it earlier, you may have just joined us. I don't know what you believe regarding the injuries. Yeah, it plays a part. Of course it does. Inconsistency, loss of form, confidence. Uh, but we've got the biggest injury crisis now to the best players. Think of the players that's injured at the minute. Hackney, Giles, Foz, Fry, all first team players, some of them we rate as the best in the squad, and I do. They're all out, but we keep running. We keep we keep this unbeaten run going. So nobody's nobody's making it just now. Oh, we're winning because of the injuries. When you get beat, everybody looking for an excuse and a way out. Oh, it's the injuries. Sometimes it plays a part. Every team in the country gets injuries. That's why you get a 30 man squad. So you have a good squad and players that's good enough to replace the players that's injured. You know you're going to get injuries. Loss of form, suspensions. Um, you know all that. So when we were huffing and puffing and heading back, oh, we, we didn't have injuries the first seven games of the season, never won a game. So that wasn't doing injuries. Then we came back and started playing well. Then injuries started to kick in. Then we were hitting missing. Then we were good. And now we went eight games. But more injuries never to the better players in the squad. Nobody says, oh, we're winning games because of the injuries. So I think it's an excuse if you want it. I think it's an excuse if you want it. The biggest, I'll tell you what, up front is the biggest, uh, what's the word I can use? It's the biggest insult. We want to score more goals. We want to be more ruthless. We'll get Lattie Laugh, the only striker on the books with any experience. He's 25, cost five million quid. He's up front on his own. We'll let Crooksy go on attacking thinking, forward thinking player. Let him go. Oh, your family, see you later. We'll let you go. We'll bow you. Yeah, okay. Forget the 24,000 family here. You'll after your family. You go to America. I didn't agree with that. 
Rogers, I get it as a business point of view, but from Carrie, uh, from a fan, which I'm a fan, furious. We've had him six months, he's 21. We're born for the future and he's gone six months. We've cast in 12 million. If we kept him at the end of the season, we may have got 20 million for him. Anybody looked at that side there? But we've let all them go. We Coburn injured. Uh, Foz injured, who everybody's seen the best strike. I don't believe it. I think they've all switched out to Lacky Laugh because I think the person are pudding. Um, so, yeah. I don't, I, don't, I don't buy into that. So, it's first seven games, no injuries. Never won a game. Nothing to do with injuries. Now we've went in the run eight. We've got all more injuries. Never had the best players in our squad. Nobody's mentioned injuries. That's the only excuse now because we're winning. So what is the excuse? Why are we winning? My excuse is because there's no pressure. There's no... Um, yeah, the pressure's not on to go and get promotion. All the pressure come off us. Top teams are all under pressure now. We're just bobbing the line going, hey, if we win, we win. If we don't, nobody expects it. The other boys like Ipswich and Leeds, they really think... Don't forget, I'm talking about experience, not a book. I'm not your university graduate who gets information out of books. I've been in three promotions in Middlesbrough, two of them in the top flight, the old First Division and the Premier League, the very first Premier League in 92. I've been under the pressure. Don't get me wrong. If you're in the door, four kids, you can't feed you. That's real pressure. I'm talking football pressure, right? There's a different kind of pressure. The football pressure is nothing like that. But there's still a pressure. So I've been in the pressure of promotion and I've been in the pressure of relegation. I think I get relegated twice with Middlesbrough. So three promotions and, and two relegations. So I've sampled both. I know the pressure involved. I know what it's all about. So I'm talking for experience, not a book, not, not somebody's told me. I'm telling you, because I've been in the dress rooms. There's a pressure. But when the pressure gets taken away, there was, there was a couple of seasons we bobbed along. We weren't going up, we weren't going down. Look at this time we beat Newcastle 4-1. There was pressure there. We could have got relegated last game of the season. But we were up for it. We beat them 4-1, stayed in the division. Unfortunately, we get relegated down Sheffield Wednesday. We had a couple of injuries, but I don't blame that. We were just weren't good enough in that day. I probably wasn't good enough. Never this shot, trying to remember his shot. I think, uh, what was his name? Ah, big set of forwards scored the goal, we, we beat 1 0. So, I'm talking about experience, pressure, and I look at the team now, and there ain't no pressure. Because deep within, we don't really believe. Even the most blinkered, biased, sycophantic fool knows deep within. Behind closed doors, if he doesn't want to admit it, because he doesn't want to upset anybody, uh, and show he's a true butter fan, which is nonsense. You're disguising it. You know, deep within, you've got... But no, they were not good enough. Uh, the eight-game run's been great. Three, uh, five wins. Five of them are against bottom, of the, uh, bottom half teams. I think three of them are against the bottom three teams when we played them. But nevertheless, you still need to win. But again, no pressure on us. The pressure's all on them. They have to stay up. We're bobbing along now. We're not going up or down now. We're just floating along. Look, Ailing done enough to stay next season. End of. Mohammed, that's your opinion. Hey, he's done well. But if I'm a centre forward and he's my main line, if Jonesy isn't doing it and he has to get by Jonesy and get balls in the box, he's not the guy that's going to get me goals. He has to give me a certain type of delivery. He can't just hoof it, no put a name in the ball. He has to whip it in low because I'm five foot nothing. I'm like he laughed. I'm going to, I know he scored a header the other week, a great goal, uh, Southampton. But he goes to dinner with bad defending, great header. But how many times are you going to do that? He needs balls whipped in on the end and put them in. Uh, Luke Haling, 30 odd. For me, we want players permanently. For a couple of years if we're building. Or again, if you've got them in a year, you're building in sand. We see the idea of bringing players in. The majority last year, we, 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 all, we signed them in four-year contracts. That was when we came out of the club. We're signing them long-term. We're getting all these young lads. We're going to polish them and sell them on. We did that. Rogers instantly, six months. See you later. 12, 14 million. Brilliant. Great business as a football club. As a business. Great. For Carrick, no. The fans, no. For me, no. But great business. And that's the idea. And then the, the loan thing was meant to be something we weren't going to do, but then we have got involved in the loans. And there's four loans, and, and, and look, Ailing's the only one that's come out with any praise, according to the general consensus, people, what they're saying. I wouldn't take any of them. Even in Bernie, hi, Ian, all right, mate. Big man, you all right. Are you the man with the trainees, Ian? Great trainees, Ian. Um, we should go for Morgan Whitaker at Plymouth. 
He can play as an attacking midfielder, right winger, and has scored 19 goals so far this season. Well, there you go. Plymouth, they're huffing and puffing, aren't they? Tell me where they are in the league. I think they're struggling, aren't they? I'm sure they are. But 19 goals in a team that's in the bottom half. Good going that, isn't it? 19 goals. Well done. 19 goals. 10 minutes already. Wow. I've not even read any of the things. Apologies for these. Um, Latte Laugh has settled in now. The finish last night was class. Poor goalkeeping. Great finish. Poor goalkeeping. Near post. I thought it went through his legs, but it went to his right uh, foot, right in the post. But great finish. Uh, it was class. I know the key. I'll show you. Well, you, you say that, sorry. Uh, but good finish it was. His runs that he makes are great runs and he makes a great, but we just need the pass a wee bit quicker. Also, Clark, our best defender, by a mile. What a comeback for a lad. Dean, I'm going to agree with you. Big Clarky. He looks a stalwart now. He looks as if he's been in the team for years. He's taking leadership, ownership. He's getting through everything. He's, he is hitting balls rather than mess about. He's not doing that. He's leaving that to other people. But he's launching them. He's supporting. He's getting fought. Last night, they went in a bit amazing. I thought he'd turned into uh, the, the Kaiser, Beckenbar. No, seriously. I think he overran it and ended up having to tackle. But yeah, the big man's been very good. I like to shake the big man's hand and say, hey, you've done well, big man. But don't forget, he was out for a long time injured, wasn't he? And he came back in and he's played bit pieces, but he's in there and merit and he, he looks the part. And what he brings is infectious. Mike Vicky have Roger Daltrey played him. That's right. Leslie, I was just saying there, yeah. yeah. Mike Vicky. Ah, oh, dear God. Leslie says, I love HMP Durham. It's like a free holiday. You're mental, Leslie. I wait, uh, McVicker. Uh, Wayne Buck says, when we were one one 0 Bernie, we were seventh. I am sorry, but no way is that team seventh best in the league. I think it's over, overachieving again. We are miles off. I agree with that, Rich. I, as I say, on here in a weekly, I always give my, my honest views. Whether you like it or not, I'm not bothered. I just give what I think because I'm a Borough fan, former Borough player. I just like to be honest with my views and, and I've never seen any real stuff substance this year where I thought, you know what, we're going to make the top six. The team last year was head and shoulders above this team. The lone players were great, the team were great, the style of play was great, the finishing was great with the top scorer in the championship and Juba bomb, and then it was all dismantled in the summer. So it's going to take time, but the fans get patience to watch this transition. I don't, I don't see many fans have been up and down the country, whatever team they support. Patience isn't a thing that they bring, that fans have got these days. Uh, to be honest, Bernie, I don't want us talking about the same things this time next season, like my old school reports could do better, could do better. Well, Steve, that's another thing. I hear all this nonsense every year, keep the faith. Yeah, next year we'll do it. No, we don't want to go up this year. What a load of pants, what a load of ball. It's absolute... It's dross. Same old rhetoric. 13 years. Now, leave it next year. No, we're not ready to go. No, I don't want to go. What are you on about? What are you on about? Last year was my best chance and opportunity for years to get in that top flight. Uh, to, yeah, to qualify through the playoffs. And we blew it. We blew it. What was the excuse there? You know, looking. They've showed they've got fight in them and balls in them. Uh, to try and compete and try and stay up. They, I, I don't really know if they'll get relegated, but they're putting up a fight here. They're not just saying, oh, well, we're going to go down. They, they're getting in there. I like the manager. I like his style. I like his, um, his, his chats in front of the camera. And I like his team work ethic and they've got a bit of class and style and they scored a few goals. But, uh, yeah, I... I don't buy in all next season. It's all hypothetical, dreamland, fantasy land, next season. Oh, we'll do it next, not with next season. And we'll get them in next season. We don't know, talking at this minute, we don't know as, as punters, and I'm a punter like you, punters and fans, we don't know who's coming in, who's going, what money's available. Michael Carrick won't know who's coming, who's going, and what money's available. I think that, that, that answers all the questions. We can only dream and fantasise what's happening next season. We have not got a clue. Nobody knows right this minute where we are going next season until uh, we close this, for the summer 
and then we come back in August and then we'll see who we've brought in and what we've spent and who's gone and who's left us. Then we'll see the debris or the exodus or the quality we've brought in. Then you'll see. At the minute, it's tittle tattle. It's, it's, it's a game. We don't know. We don't know. Uh, I need to go to bed now in my new fresh bedding. Good lad, Enzo. Look after the cat. Bernie Carrick done well with what players he has. You have to admit it, Bernie. John, I'm a Carrick fan. No. Carrick, I, I just think that Rodgers and Crook saying, you know, when, when Carrick's come out and saying, yeah, Crook's wanted to go, we caught for him. Crook's wanted to go, his family, yeah, his family's important. Yeah, everybody's family's important. But the 24,000 Borough fans' family are important. And if you get 18 months in your contract, I'll tell you what, Crook, say, we'll let you go in the summer. And then you can go and we'll, we'll have the contract. And that's fair to us, isn't it, big man? But no, no, we'll let him go. I don't know what money we got. I don't know who sanctioned it. But I don't think Carrick would have had any saying it. And that's where we are. So we let them go on the left way, Latty Laugh, who's took the bill with the horns and despite lack of quality service and, and, and tip bits, he scored a few. And he's looking good. And now I feel sorry for him. His first touch needs improving for next season if he gets his first touch right. By the way, was it last night there was a couple of good touches they had? And a couple of bad ones, a couple of good ones, I thought, maybe he's been practising. That's what he has to do. Stay behind, get the balls pounding, get your touch right, get it out. I've done it myself. Bruce says you crap with your head. I stayed back, bag of balls, scored two in the next three games with my head. Oh, you don't shoot for outside the box. Practice shooting, got a couple in the next ten games or whatever. Uh, it's how you react, how you respond, how much you want it, how much you want to prove people wrong. I'm, tr I'm trying to help that laugh. Lighty laugh, his touch is poor. For a £5 million sign and a 25-year-old, his touch is poor. Bernard, what about Engel? Superstar or super flop? Engel, I'm still uh, open to debate. Uh, I'm not sitting in the fence. What I've seen him, sometimes he looks good, sometimes he looks a wee bit rash and hesitant. Uh, but he's going to be here, isn't he? I think he will get better. I don't think he will get better. I mean, it must be a culture shock. I don't know where, where, where is Engel from. But he's shocked, isn't it? I get shocked when I come off a of train. Middlesbrough, I thought I'd landed in the moon. Took me a year to settle in Middlesbrough. Uh, you just know what the opposition manager will say. This is for Michael Summerhill. Um, get at them. And when they start playing from the back, there's a goal there uh, for us. I agree, Michael. Definitely. They take chances. That's what I'd say. If I, was, if I was a coach, manager, listen, you've seen them. We'd be watching videos. You'd be telling them. You'd be doing drills. As soon as Dan gets the ball, make him hit it long. And when he hits it long, there's five foot nothing, Latty Laugh, who's fast as, but as long as it's in there, we're going to win all the balls. Or we should do it in the main. The width, not a lot down the width, down the flanks. Jones, he got a bit of pace, but that's about it. On the left, there's nothing. There's no outlet in the left. There's no product in the left. That's the reality. We have done well going eight games unbeaten with, with, with lack of quality and, and, and with deficiencies. Um, but you're right, we might as well get the best loan players and hopefully get us to the top six because loan or in contract means nothing uh, because we will sell if offered cash. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're probably right, Leslie. If we sign players and they, they're good in a short period like Rogers, we sell them. If the loans are no good, we let them go back. And then you need to keep building. It's just a never-ending it's the same thing every year. But if Carrick said, I'm sure Carrick will be wanting to get back to the standards to get back to last year. But the only way he's going to do that is get better quality players in. Whether it's signings, loans, players with knowledge and think, hey, he's a good player. As I say, last year, when I came to Middlesbrough, nobody had a clue who it was. I never heard of Middlesbrough, they hadn't heard of me. That's fine. But I'm one player. We brought 12 of them in in the summer. Do you think they're all going to hit the ground running and start putting in five-star shifts and performances? No. At the 12, Van der Berg, Dieng. I think that's about it, really. At the 12, we brought in the summer. The rest have been hitting missy. Inconsistent at the team, in the team. Injured. I read somewhere we got just under one million for Crooks. Yeah, fair enough. One million in a modern game is peanuts. Peanuts. So, was your ambition to get into the top six realistically? 
and keep guys like Crooch because the window had closed, the official window had closed, but it so happens he goes to America where it doesn't kick in. So we just go, oh, he's a million pound from 80 months his contract, forget it. If, if, if every player goes in and say, I want to do what Crooch has done, I want away, you think they're going to bout it? No. The for the reason to do it, is it the million pound? Possibly. Was it the right decision in my, in my mind? No, no chance. If I was carried peeved off, definitely. Um, and you'll bet Hunter then. What are you on? Let's you off your nut. Wayne Butt says, Sean Smith, funny that was refunded after the second home game, you thick so and so. So he's referring to somebody. Uh, Sean that says, Evening Bernard. Sean, evening. I know fans are disappointed after last season, but I think it's looking at the bigger picture. Players were signed as a player. Players were signed as a player, yeah. Not loans. Well, we've got four loans in, but all the lads last year, year and four-year contracts, all 19, 21, 22, yeah, like the previous seasons. I think most of those players will be better for a season under the belt and additions to come next season. Looking forward to seeing you the legends, mate, up the borough. Thanks, Sean. Yeah, which one? I get the I get the policy of the club. I get what they're trying to do. But some of them, I don't think, are good enough. The 12th that come in the summer, some of them will fall by the wayside. Some of them won't be here in, in the summer. Uh, will they? Yeah. Somebody wants them, they'll be gone. And if, if they have no set the head of the light, we'll soon get rid of them. Uh, we must bring in better quality players in the summer. Hey, these guys might prove down the line, but they're not all going to click. They're not all going to be a success. It doesn't work like that. We, we, we cast in, we brought 12 in the summer. Rogers, unbelievable. 12, 14 million in six months, age 21. <laughs> that, that's the whole object of what, the, 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 what we're trying to do as a football club. Make money, stay in. And I get it. If I was Steve Gibson, I'd be fuming with the guys that sanctioned Rudy Gestead and this one and that one. Absolute donkeys. And blowing money out the window and say, no, we ain't doing that. We're not doing it now. We're going to employ a director of football. He's going to take control. He's going to be in charge now. And he'll come to us and tell us what money they're looking for. And we'll say, yeah, no. And that's the way it operates now. Not just at Middlesbrough, up and down the country. The last team in Scotland to win something in Europe was Aberdeen back in 83. I don't think you were born when Celtic won something, maybe a toddler. Leslie, I was seven year old, son. Celtic won the European Cup. I went to see Celtic return for Lisbon, where they beat into Milan. That was a real European Cup and the real competition when the people that played for Celtic we all came for a 26 mile radius. Simpson, Craig, Gemmell, Mother, Mio, I've got a big picture here. It's only selling picture I've got in here, the rest of Middlesbrough. But I've got it signed with the Lisbon Lions. It takes pride of pride. Celtic win the real European Cup with Scottish lads at the helm. Against all the Italian stallions with the tans and the smart hair and the fancy boots. And there was wee Jimmy Johnson, ginger hair, white as a sheet. And all the other lads all white as a sheet because they were all born in Glasgow. Because the sun never shines there, as you know. Uh, and they beat the Inter Milan. That was it. That was a real European Cup. And if you get knocked out, you were out. You didn't get another go and you dropped down to another competition in Europe. That was a real deal. And that's why I sell it for that wee star. And yeah, I did see them. My late father went there, came to Florida to Scarf for all that day in Lisbon. And uh, when they returned, sell it with Round Park Head with the European Cup. Uh, my dad had him up on his shoulders because he had returned to Lisbon. And they were on the back here. I think it was a coal truck. Yeah, coal truck. They're decorated in green and white and they went around the stadium where there was about 80 or 100,000 in it and about 100,000 outside it. Memories as a kid. Which you remember as a kid watching the borough, Leslie? Was Murdoch on the team? Yeah, he was, of course he was. Bobby Murdoch. Stevie Chalmers. Bobby Lennox. William Wallace. No, no, that William Wallace. Wally Wallace. Yeah, that was a team. Jim Craig. He, he was a dentist. Tommy Gemmell. John Clark. Big Billy McNeil, what a team, what a great team. That's my boyhood heroes, that's what I keep saying. Middlesbrough's the same, Celtic's my boyhood heroes. I can go on better, I vaguely remember sitting in the, the daft lap, my dad's lap, I think that means in 66 watching England win the World Cup, wow. Stephen, that's a great story, yeah, brilliant. So he remembers England, 66 watching the, the England win the World Cup, wow. I kept saying, just we'll finish in England. 
my boys are English, so this thing I don't like, well, it's a lot of old tosh. Um, I just love football. I have said since I arrived in Teesside almost 40 years ago, next year, in the new year, 40 years I've been here. I kept saying 35, somebody corrected me the other week. 40 years in Teesside. I love it. I love the area. I love the people. I love the the the, the working class fibre. That's where I'm from, council estate. And I love all that. And I love mixing. I love talking to people. Um, I'm no, I, I've been brought up. You're no bigger than anybody else. Nobody's bigger than you. You come in with nothing, you go out with nothing. That's the way I live my life. And I love animals. Everybody knows that. But anyway, I'm going to go. I'm rabbiting. I'm going. Would like to laugh. Have got any Bruce Rear team alongside you, Bernie? Well, if he did, it wouldn't suit me because he's too small. I needed a Archie Stevens. That's what threw me by the way. I needed an Archie Stevens who was the same height as me, but he could jump five foot more than me and win balls and brave, really brave and tough Archie. Wow. He was experienced. He was about five years older than me. He was tough. Still tough. Still see Archie. Then uh, uh, Ian Bird, my best striking partner, Paul Wilkinson. They were all, but, so I would have to play up with somebody. So me and Lighty Laugh, I wouldn't help Lighty Laugh much and he wouldn't help me because of that. If I was six foot four and played up front, I was ferocious and banging guys and laying it off and yeah, it would work. But I think Lighty Laugh needs somebody that's different from him. They don't need to be as quick as Lighty Laugh, but they need to be bigger, stronger and, and, and more ferocious and ruffle feathers at the heart of the opposing defence. That's what I think, yeah. Uh, okay, Leslie, you're right. I've overshot the runway. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, time is up. Yeah, it's time. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry for not reading these. I'm back again. Oh dear God. Saturday. I'll be back at six o'clock. Yeah, six o'clock. We play up such a way. I'll be watching the game. Then we'll be talking about it and digesting, uh, chewing the fat regarding the, what the outcome is. So, thanks for joining us. Well done, Bora. Eight games. Unbeaten is no mean feat, as I say, I think there's reasons, and I've given my reasons on it, but you still have to go and do it. Can we beat Ipswich? Yes. Do I think we can? Possibly. Ipswich have been huffing and puffing. There's no pressure on us. All the pressure's on them. They're expected to win. They're at home in front of their own fans. They have been up there all season. Who do they need to deal with? Let them go on with it. Okay, thank you very much. Cheers. Good night. Cheers. Thank you very much.